welcome everyone today we'll see about burns let's get started burns occur when there is injury to the tissues of the body that is caused by heat chemical electrical current and radiation so based on the sources of burns the burns are categorized one is thermal burns chemical burns inhalation or smoke injury electrical burns cold thermal injury we'll see one by one some of the few examples of thermal burns are clothing ignited with fire and hot bath water burns spilled hot beverages hot grease or liquids from cooking and burns due to pressure cookers microwaved food automobile radiators and when we touch very hot objects and chemical burns burns by alkali as well as the acids alkali substances are very difficult to manage than acid burns because alkali substances are not neutralized by tissue fluids as readily as acid substances this alkali it will add her to the tissue that cause the protein hydrolysis and liquefactions and some of the few examples of alkali burns are by cleaning agents drain cleaners and lyes and electrical burns it is an intense heat generated from the electrical current causing tissue anoxia and death and uh, cold thermal injury is uh, otherwise called frost bite is caused because of the very cool temperature or uh, the freezing temperature here what happens is tissue freezing occurs which results in the formation of ice crystals in the tissue of the cells and uh, next is inhalation injury it occurs from the inhalation of the poisonous gases so most of the time majority of the death occurs at the fire scene is due to carbon monoxide poisoning and asphyxia this carbon monoxide it is produced by the incomplete combustion of burning material so normally oxygen will be there in our blood in the hemoglobin molecule this carbon monoxide will displace the oxygen in the hemoglobin molecule and causes hypoxia that is decrease in the oxygen level so we can easily identify the carbon monoxide poisoning by the uh, by observing the skin color the skin color will be cherry red in color when the carbon monoxide poisoning is suspected immediately we have to give 100 percentage humidified oxygen now how do you calculate the burns so burns we cal classify uh, to uh, treat the patient according to the severity so it is classified by the depth of the burn extent of the burn location of the burn as well as the patient risk factors let's see one by one so first one is depth of the burn so we know the anatomy of the skin it is made up of three different layers epidermis dermis and hypodermis the hypodermis contains the subcutaneous tissue and all this epidermis is the topmost layer of the skin it is a non vascular layer outermost layer of the skin and this dermis lies below the epidermis it is almost 30 to 45 times thicker than epidermis this dermis contains connective tissues, blood vessels, hair follicles, nerve endings, sweat glands and sebaceous glands. So under the dermis, the connect subcutaneous tissue present. So it contains fat, nerve and lymphatics. So below that we have muscle, tendon, bones and internal organs. So, the depth of the burns is classified as partial thickness and full thickness. So, as the degrees, first degree, second degree, third and fourth degree. Look at the slide there, picture there. So, in the first degree, layers affected, only superficial layer affected. So, we can see erythema, blanching on pressure, uh, pain and swelling and there won't be any vesicles or blisters. In the second degree, 
both outer layer that is epidermis layer and dermis layer are affected here vesicles present severe pain that is caused by the nerve injury and edema also present the third and the fourth degree all the skin elements and nerve endings are affected the skin will looks like dry waxy white and leathery skin there won't be any pain because of nerve destruction and there will be involvement of bones muscles and tendons so look at the picture here you will get a little more idea in superficial burns only the top most layer is affected in the second degree burn little deeper in the dermis layer is affected the full thickness it goes to the muscle uh, tendons and everything is affected next is the extent of burn so extent of burn is calculated in percentages it is usually calculated to find out the total body surface area affected so normally if any burns occurs we say that 50 percentage burns or 35 percentage burns this percentage is calculated by two formulas one is rule of nine other one is land browder chart so the land browder chart is more specific because the age is also taken into account first let's see about the uh, rule of nine so in this adult picture so why it is called rule of nine or uh, everything is the multiples of nine so head it is nine percentage if head is affected we'll put nine percentage right and left arm it is nine percentage each and chest it is 18 percentage back it is 18 percentage and both the extremities right leg uh, and left leg it is 18 percentage each and it perineum it is one percentage so total hundred percentage and child head it is 18 percentage because head occupies the more total body surface area and right arm and left arm will be nine percentage each chest and back it is 18 percentage each and leg it is 13.5 percentage each so this is what the rule of nine to determine the total body surface area affected the next is the land browder chart so in the land browder chart as i told earlier here age is also taken into account not only age if you look at the picture you could see that in the rule of nine entire hand is nine percentage but in land broader chart the palm is one and a half percentage forearm is one and a half percentage and upper arm it is two percentage so the each body part is divided separately and given percentages so it is will be little more specific than the rule of nine so land browder chart is always considered as more accurate because of this uh, small specification as well as the age is also taken into account and next we'll see about the location of the burn so location of the burn is the area where the burn occurred so if the burn occurs to the face and the neck so what happens there will be edema in the respiratory tract like nose throat pharynx and all no edema occurs and there will be difficulty in the air entry and if the burn occurs to the hands feet joints and eyes that makes the self-care more difficult not only that these part are rich in blood supply as well as the nerve supply either the if the total nerves are affected there won't be any pain and uh, if little nerves are affected there will be severe pain and blood loss will be more and ear and nose burns they are more susceptible to infection because they are made up of cartilages and because of the poor blood supply to the cartilages they are more susceptible to infection and burns to the extremities can sub interrupt the blood supply distal to the burns for example if there is a burn in the thigh region there won't be any proper blood supply to the leg and the foot so there will be interruption in the blood supply so always this location of the burn is more important when taking care uh, when the burn occurred and uh, the next is the patient's risk factors so even the age due to aging process the older adults uh, burns occurs in the older adults will heal more slowly and because of the pre-existing any comorbid conditions like cardiovascular respiratory and renal diseases so 
before admitting the hospital as soon as the burn has occurred remove the person from the source of fire and stop the burning process if it is a chemical burns the solid particles are brushed followed by lavage of water and if it is a small thermal burns the burns area to be covered by a wet towel that is made cool by a tap water and if the burn is large do not immerse the burned body part in water because to prevent the heat loss and now see about we'll see about the phases of burns management so remember the word pneumon remember the pneumonic year so there are three different phases emergent phase acute phase and rehabilitative phase so in each phase we'll see about what is the meaning of that and what are the pathophysiological changes what are the complication and how do we manage that particular phase so we'll see one by one so let's begin with emergent phase so in the emergent phase it is a period of time required to solve the immediate problems so it starts from the onset of burn to 5 or more days so immediately uh, after the burn there will be lot of fluid losses so it begins with the fluid loss and edema and continues until the fluid mobilization and diuresis occurs so what are the pathophysiological changes uh, during this phase so immediately following the burn there will be fluid and electrolyte shifts will be there so water sodium and plasma protein present in the capillary will move from the capillary into the interstitial cells and also the surrounding tissues so what happens when everything moves out there will be decrease in the intravascular volume so what happens hypovolemic shock occurs the next is the hemolysis of rbcs the red blood cells are hemolyzed by a circulating factor that released at the time of burn and thrombosis occurs so next is the sodium and potassium shifts the sodium shift to the interstitial cells they'll come out of the cells and potassium moves into the cells so when the potassium moves into the cells hyperkalemia occurs increase in potassium level and inflammation and healing so in the inflammation and healing neutrophils and monocytes they will accumulate at the site of injury and thereby edema and inflammation occurs fibroblast and newly formed collagen they'll begin the wound repair within 6 to 12 hours after injury so you, we know that skin is the protective layer of our body so skin barrier is destroyed and if the, the if the skin barrier is destroyed it makes us more susceptible to infection because there won't be any skin in the burnt area so the signs and symptoms is based on the depth of burn and extent of burn so now see about uh, complication of emergent phase so in the emergent phase because of the blood loss uh, there will be hypovolemic shock and arrhythmias occurs when there is an blood loss the blood components remains the same so there will be increase in the blood viscosity the solvent is lost but solutes are present so there will be increase in blood viscosity and respiratory if it is an upper respiratory tract burn it leads to airway obstruction because of edema and in urinary system because of hypovolemia so there will be decreased blood flow to the kidney so what happens renal ischemia so these are the some of the complications of emergent phase so next we'll see how do we manage the uh, emergent phase first and foremost is airway management second one is fluid therapy following that wound care drug therapy nutritional therapy in the airway management so when there is an inhalation injury we have to administer humidified oxygen and patient should be kept in the high fowler's position 
uh, if there is a no spinal cord injury and cough and deep breathing exercises are encouraged chest physiotherapy and suctioning to be done if there is more secretions and fluid therapy as the blood lot of blood got lost we have to give administer the fluid before that we have to establish iv access to large bore iv line to be kept ready because hypovolemic shock may occur so iv therapy is usually initiated for patients greater than 15 percentage total body surface area affected so this fluid therapy is replaced by crystalloid solution or by colloid solutions crystalloid solution example normal saline ringa lactate 5% dextrose in colloids albumin dextron are given so this is what the formula so look at the picture we'll see a uh, formula for estimating the replacement of adult burn patient so two formulas given brook and parkland in the brook for the first 24 hours ringa lactate 2 ml per kg body weight per percentage of area affected so in that half will be given during the first 8 hours and remaining half will be given during the next 16 hours and the next 24 hours that is the second day 0.3 to 0.5 ml per kg body weight per total area of body surface area affected in the parkland formula ring a lactate 4 ml per kg body weight per total body surface area affected in that half will be given during the first 8 hours and 1 by 4 will be given during the next 8 hours and 1 by 4 will be given during the next 8 hours in the second day second 24 hours 20 to 60 percentage of calculated plasma volume will be given so i'll show you an example of parkland formula how to calculate the fluid requirement so here we'll take an example of a patient weighing of 70 kg weight and total body surface area affected is 50 percentage so how much ringa lactate 4 ml right so 4 ml weight of the patient is 70 kg percentage of burn is 50 percentage so how much fluid 14000 ml that is 14 liters in 24 hours so half of that should be given in the first eight hours what is a half of 14 14000 ml 7000 ml so that means in one hour 875 ml 1 by 4th of the total in the second eight hours that is 3500 ml so for each one hour we have to give 436 ml the next 1 by 4 to be given in the second 8 hour so that comes 3500 ml so in each 1 hour we have to give 436 ml so how do we know that our fluid replacement is adequate so the urine output should be 30 to 50 ml per hour and systolic bp should be greater than 90 to 100 mm of hg and pulse rate should be less than 120 respiration 16 to 20 breaths per minute and sensorium patient should be alert oriented to time place and person and how do we care the wound burn wound first one is cleansing and debridement debridement is removal of non viable tissue so if the burn wound area is large this procedure to be done in the operating room and dressings with topical antibiotics and skin grafting skin grafting can be taken from their own body or from cadaver if more area of the burn there won't be any tissue skin available then we have to go for a cadaver and i care for the corneal burns and ophthalmic examination to be done for all patients with facial burns and periorbital edema may present this will prevent the opening of the eyes patient will be scared so we have to tell them so the vision will be restored when this periorbital edema is subsided and hands and arms should be elevated on a pillow to minimize the edema and in case of ear burns should not use the pillow because the burned ear may stick to the pillow cover and in case of neck burns also we cannot use pillows uh, and in case of neck burns the neck should be hyper extended to prevent the wood contractures 
and drug therapy analgesics and sedatives can be given for pain and uh, all medications should be given as iv and not im because absorption will be very less because of burns and nutritional therapy uh, so initiate with uh, nasogastric tubing for decompression so when the bowel sounds are returns we can initiate the oral feeding and um, this burns patients they will be in hyper metabolic state so calorie requirement will be very high 5000 kilo calories per day because of protein losses also and uh, uh, metabolic expenditure will be increased 50 percentage to 100 percentage above the normal person so this is all about the emergent phase acute phase and rehabilitation phase will be continued in the, as part 2 in the next video if you have any doubts put it in the comment section if you like this video please consider subscribing to my channel thank you